This video will show how to do an example of an apportionment problem using Hamilton's method. So our problem, a county school board is dividing teachers between its five high schools. The county can hire 175 teachers. So we have our five high schools with their student populations and each school is a different size. So there are more students at East and Lincoln, for example, than Laurel and Owen. So we want to see how do we, as fairly as possible, split the 175 teachers among the five different schools. So to do this, the first thing we want to do is get our total number of students. So I'm going to sum my student population to get the total, which is 4,875 students. Now our standard divisor will tell us how many students should be assigned to each teacher. So if I take my total number of students, which is 4,875, and divide it by the 175 teachers that I can hire, this tells me that every 27.857 students I have should get a teacher. But we can't split a person into 0.85. We either need to give 27 students or 28 students to a teacher. We cannot split up people. So this is why we've got to do our Hamilton's method to see how do we, as fairly as possible, split these students up among the different teachers. First thing we want to find are our standard quotas, which is that perfect world if we could divide people up. So we're going to take our student population and divide it by our standard divisor. And when you click on the standard divisor, you need to lock in that cell by hitting the F4 button on your keyboard. And for my laptop, I actually have to hit function and then F4 to get it to work. But what happens when you hit the F4 button is it locks in the cell, which visually this means it puts a dollar sign in front of the row and column number. And what it means to lock in a cell is when I drag down here in a second, it's going to change the B6, my student population number, so it'll change it from Owen's population to East population and so on, but it's not going to change the number in the um, denominator, which is the standard divisor. I want that 27.857 number to stay the same while it changes the numerator. So again, I hit the F4 button on my keyboard to lock in that value. So when I drag down, what's going to happen is it will calculate all the standard quotas for me. So the first one was B6 divided by C13. When I go to the next one, it changes it to B7, still dividing by C13. So by locking in that cell, it's not changing our denominator. It's only changing the numerator, which is what I want because my standard divisor does not change. So here we see that Owen should technically get 31.4 teachers. And each should technically get 41.28 teachers. But again, you can't split up people. So next what we do is we find the minimum quota, which is rounding each of these numbers down. So I'm going to round down. So we have 31, 41, 43, 26, and 33. And if I sum that column, that shows me that I have 174 teachers accounted for, but I have 175 teachers available. So what we do is we put any remaining teachers left over to the standard quotas with the highest fractional part. So we've got one extra teacher to go from 174 to 175. So we need to figure out which standard quota had the highest fractional part, which would have been Owen, because it's 0.41 compared to 0.28, 07, 02, and 0.2. So the extra teacher is going to go to Owen. So Owen will get 32 teachers and the rest of them get the minimum quota. So that now if we sum our teachers, we have 175 teachers accounted. 